He's on vacation. He's off a tour. He's willing to sing with us. And, and Damon and I were talking a little bit earlier, and, and Damon, you were sharing one of your heart's desires, you know, your earnest plea before God is that, that you, even though you don't have your brothers up here singing with you, that, uh, that you could have Brad come up here and sing with you, right? That's right. That's right. Is, is that okay? Do you think we should have Brad come up here and sing? So I'm going to pray, and I know Brad will make his way up here. You know, <laughs> and I'll hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Will you join me as we just continue to celebrate God and just prepare your hearts for an incredible ministry here? God, we love you. Thank you so much for the privilege of being in your house, being able to celebrate and laugh that you are a God of joy. And Lord, I would pray, Lord, as we just give unto you, Lord, that you bless the gift and the giver, Lord, that your kingdom would be magnified in and through our lives all across this region, God. We give you the praise and the glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Look, I'm from the South, okay? So if I talk funny, forgive me. But we believe in really worshiping the Lord in the South, amen? I'm from the middle of the Bible Belt, so we'll do that one first, okay? Wasn't the one that was planned, but this one's for my Uncle Lewis. He told me I had to sing it if I was going to be here. You say that no one cares about the problems in your life. The day is quickly fading to a dark and a lonely night. Your friends have all abandoned and you don't know what to do. There stands a man at Calvary. And he's dying to know you. Dying to know all your worries and your cares. Dying to live every burden that you bear. Dying to heal all the pain that seems. Your heart is true. On the cross of Calvary, He was dying to know you. He looked beyond the crowds that cursed and mocked Him on that day. And He looked on the soldiers as they carried him away and he looked beyond the portals of time and saw the things you're going through and as he took the cross upon his back he was dying to know you dying to know all your worries and your days, dying to live every burden that you bear, dying to heal all the pain that seems to tear your heart in two. On the cross of Calvary, He was. Dying to know you, dying to heal all the pain that seems to tear your heart in two. On the cross of Calvary, He was dying to know you. Now, would you, like I said, I'm from the South. We, we're in the middle of the Bible Belt, and we like to hoot and holler. And that's a Southern term, hoot and holler. Yell and scream. When, we like to act like we're at a football game or something when we're in church. We make some noise, okay? So I encourage you to put your hands together and help me with this next song. He forgot 
more than I'll ever know. Amen. I knew my sins were many. I knew that I was headed down a road of sorrow, pain, and woe. I could not count the times that I had fallen short and failed him, but he still threw away all sin, and he saved my soul. He forgot more than I'll ever know. When he took my sin, and he washed me white as snow. He forgot it all when he said, be free. I don't deserve the grace that he bestowed. He forgot more than I'll ever know. Sometimes I am reminded when Satan tries to tempt me. And he recalls the times I believed God down. But I remind him of a Savior who died for countless failures. From the chains of sin, I am no longer found. He forgot more than I'll ever know. When he took my sins and he washed me white as snow. But he forgot it all when he set me free. I don't deserve the grace that he bestowed. He forgot more than I'll ever know. He forgot more than I'll ever know. When he took my sins and he washed me white as snow. He forgot it all when he said, be free. I don't deserve the grace that he bestowed. He forgot more than how ever knows. He forgot more than how ever knows. Ever knows. Amen. I'm so thankful today that he forgot, he forgot the man that I used to be, and he only looks at my potential. He only looks at who I can be in him. Amen? I've spent most of my life traveling, singing gospel music from the time I was 10 years old, 31 years traveling and singing gospel music, and I haven't always lived the life that I portrayed on the stage. I found myself seeking the applause of men. I found myself as a performer, looking for the praises of men, listening to the applause and thinking, look what I just did. And about three years ago, three or four years ago, I found myself on stage listening. And suddenly I heard a different voice. I heard a voice telling me who I could be, that I was created to worship an almighty God who forgave me of who I used to be. And I started to listen to that voice. And I learned again what it means to be a worshiper. Instead of seeking the applause of men, I want nothing more anymore than to worship my God. I left the road. I haven't traveled in in three years. Now, some of you have watched the video podcast. My brothers and I are, are starting to do a little bit on the road now, but I, I, I don't have a desire for that. I have a desire to be a worshiper. I don't have a desire to stand on a stage in front of thousands of people and bring praise to myself. If it doesn't point to Jesus, I don't want any part of it. I work with children now. I work with kindergarten through fifth grade. It was awesome to watch these kids come up here. We have probably 150 kids that come through our children's ministry every weekend in three services. And my wife and I are uh, about to be the children's pastors in uh, Redfield, Arkansas. And uh, Arkansas, yeah. 
pray for me, all right? But it's awesome to watch God move in these kids. I never thought, Pastor, that I would ever say I would rather preach God's Word than sing. But I love preaching God's Word to these kids. In the last year to year and a half, we've seen about 100 kids, well, 75, 50 to 75 kids come to know the Lord in the last year. Somewhere between 50 and 75 kids in all of our services. There's nothing greater. There's nothing greater. But this next song, this last song, shares my heart. There's nothing more that means any more to me. I can sing all day long. I can, in Arkansas we would say I can toot my own horn and bring praise to myself and it means nothing. But I'd rather have Jesus. Nothing else matters. I'd rather be faithful to His cause. I'd rather have Jesus. And silver or gold, I'd rather be his than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or land. I'd rather be led by his. Thank you. 